These semaphores were available from 1915 on, at the start of the zero gauge program. They were available without light until 1921. The lighted version were produced until 1926. Here you see the lighted version of the single and double armed 65 and 66 semaphore. The size of this equipment rather fitted standard than zero gauge. In 1926, Leine introduced the first solenoid-operated semaphore. The solenoid was either activated by an insulated track section or by a 41 contactor, as shown here. The sensitivity of the contactor was adjusted with a screw. This semaphore had a built-in unit to stop the train. Here you see the circuit. Time of the stop could be regulated by a lever. Now the coil heats up the bimetal, which bends until it makes contact. It was set on continuous, the train didn't stop. This is a simple warning signal, which was available in two sizes, for standard and zero gauge. The standard gauge was available from 1920 to 1939. The zero gauge from 1925 to the end of the pre war production period. This was Lionel's first track actuated accessory. It was operated from an insulated section of one of the outer rails. When the train passed, it connected the two outer rails and the signal was activated. This accessory was connected to two adjacent sections of insulated track which activated the two lamps, one after the other, when the train passed by.
This train control signal did rather fit a standard gauge. It contains a train stop circuit, which is not activated here. The 79 highway signal contained a bimetal strip which was heated, then connected, cooled and disconnected. This resulted in a blinking action. You can see the minute movement of the bimetal arm in this video. This traffic signal was another item fitting rather to standard gauge. It had a strange diver's helmet containing a light bulb. You see here an early and a late version. The Moyaf base was produced until 1934, then replaced by the Red base, made until the end of the pre-war production. This was a modified version of the 83 traffic signal with a more appropriate top instead of the diver's helmet. This block signal was produced for standard gauge and zero gauge and only differed in the hookup for the two different gauges. In 1936 it became universal as 99N. It contained the same train subunit as the automatic semaphore. the level was set on continuous, the train didn't stop. This is the first signal developed in the proper size for zero gauge. The automatic highway signal used a special contactor with two sections which separately activated each of the two lights whenever a wheel passed over it. The 
1569 accessory set was delivered with the unexpensive wind-up trains. This huge signal bridge is only appropriate for standard gauge and I have not mounted it on my zero gauge layout. It was only in 1952 that Leimler introduced the signal bridge for zero gauge.